welcome back to Gene Key of the Day, where it is a new moon and we are opening up into such a deep time of change and moment in history that it's worth taking a look at what are the archetypal energies that are influencing us internally from the external of our cosmic moon. So happy new moon. It's June 4th, and there's something very special about this new moon, um, so let's just get into it. We have lost our moon symbol, so imagine right here that you see a big moon, that just right there with the sun and Venus in the 35th gene key. From hunger to adventure and the city of boundlessness. So the new moon, again, this is, I've come to really love these, the lunar cycles and how it's tracking these two most intimate bodies that we relate to in the sky, the sun and the moon, and how they dance with each other in relation to us on the earth it really provides us with a mirror to our own internal rhythms and cycles of growth. When the new moon is, when the moon and the sun are conjunct, this is the moment where it's like the slate is cleared and it's time to jump on another wave of, of growth, of change, of something. And so this new moon is happening in Gemini, in uh, this 35th key and it's infused with the feminine energy of venus so how is this next lunation cycle this next 29.5 this next month going to be infused with the lessons of venus opening us up to how to more deeply love ourselves to the inner value in our being and in all the ways that Gemini is very um, diverse. It's gonna connect with all these different places in our consciousness. And so that's gonna color what this next month is gonna be for us. Um, the 35 being involved here, this 35 is like planting itself into our psyche to kind of play out a story. And so consider hunger, this, desire to reach outside of ourselves and evolve the world externally and bring about experiences and, and all sorts of stuff outside here, but not actually touch the inner riches of our heart. So again, Venus drawing us deeper into our heart, into our love nature. This adventure, I feel as we embark on this journey, there's such a potency to the moment right now. Adventure is touching into the endocrine system and how we chemically affect our, the hormones that are going through our body and the, our chemical states through our, our consciousness. And the more we attune to love and the more we soften and deepen into our presence, the more that we are actually harnessing this gorgeous power of our human physiology and having these rushes of hormones that are love truly moving through our bodies and giving these ecstatic states of serotonin and all sorts of beauty can come about from this inner adventure. So consider this next month, you're on an inner adventure of some sort and what is going to come of it. You might see this playing out in your relationships, in your intimacy, um, in your friendships, in your social world, the way you connect and communicate. Gemini is ruled by Mercury. So you might notice some mercurial tones to this. Okay, so that's just one piece um, because this new moon is also really special for uh, another reason. And that is it's forming, it's coming into placement to form a grand cross. This is major. So. If you can see here, um, the sun, moon, Venus is opposed directly to Saturn right now. So that in itself is creating quite a, um, 
a force, a force of, um, it's asking our discipline into this next cycle. Are we truly disciplined in this work of opening into this love and tracking our hunger to turn inwards and to be patient with ourselves in this journey? Saturn has a bad rap. <laughs> And I happen to be one of these folks that really likes to turn into the gift nature of Saturn a little more. You might, yes, be fe feeling the rigidity, the responsibility, the like downtrodden sort of like real reality, you know, part of Saturn. But there's such a deep devotional quality here. So whatever Saturn is shining into your life, so here in this new moon, it's, it's, it's bringing its force into emanation into this cycle. It's really giving you an opportunity to commit deeper to the process that you're in, to stop moving your energy so externally and really get real with what you can do here and now on the ground. Now, it's not that simple because we're also working with the grand square. That was just one opposition and the grand cross is two oppositions in perfect square with each other. So here we have Neptune that we've pointed to before in Pisces in the 63rd gene key. And opposing it still, as we've already mentioned, is Jupiter in the 64th in Virgo. And just in a couple days, this north node is going to be moving into the 64th as well. So they'll be conjunct in the 64th. Okay, so what does that mean? So Neptune being in the 63rd gene key. Neptune as a planet is this ultimate receiving dish. It's a receptor, a very deeply feminine, mystical planet that just will dissolve anything that it comes in touch to, to bring it back into the oneness. So it has this deep visionary quality. So think about, let's first touch into the shadow. Whatever Neptune touches in the chart, it's creating a fog around. It's sort of hard to see through the cloud. And so with doubt, there can be a lot during this time, the shadow, the 63rd shadow of doubt, you might be feeling this cloud of doubt, self-doubt, doubt of the other, suspicion, the repressive reactive. See how you're, there's a need to draw in clarity on the issue of moving from doubt to inquiry. So the way that these inner questions and this needing to feel a foundation of truth is really being tested right now because it's a confusing time right now. So as Neptune raises into the gifts, she's a very visionary being. And she's opening into this expansive quality of inquiry and truth. So think about that. Visionary inquiry. Asking the mystical cosmic questions that don't have answers in the mind. That come alive through our experience. There's a very pr deep probability that we are opening up to some very potent cosmic truths. But we just have to watch for where... There's just a fog, a foggy doubt in ourselves. And use the devotional energy of Saturn to really harness in some truth. So opposite here of Neptune, we have Jupiter in 64. So Jupiter being this guru, beneficiary, expansive planet, it also has a shadow. So when Jupiter is in its shadow, it's extremist. It exacerbates the situation. It's just gonna like amplify an already messed up kind of situation. So the shadow of 64 is confusion. So again, it's a confusing kind of time right now. There might not be real clarity around some of these questions that we have or choices that we need to make, but just settle in because confusion just needs time. That's again where Saturn's coming in with patience. 
confusion needs time. So don't let the Jupiter, you know, just use your awareness to see how there might be an extreme feeling of confusion and to narrow in and harness in that power of imagination as this planet, this, this guru who's just bearing the gifts, like Jupiter just wants to bless you up wherever it's passing through. So we also have this expanded access to imagination. How can our life as art process, how we experience the flash of creativity coming through all the way down into our cells, how can we expand that out and allow the visions and the truth of our inquiries be brought through a creative means and just really ride that wave of of the the true mythic art and the alchemical vessels that we are so harnessing these two polarities there's a lot of energy um also just want to say that with this opposition there's a lot of like external expanding mental kind of visionary out here-ness and i love that saturn is coming in and sitting right in the jinky of patience and so from all of this just as all together this is a ground cross that's in the mutable mode so instead of being really rooted and grounded Mutable is very changing and, and bringing about lots of shifts. So as a whole, this cross, yes, is bringing about great change. It's asking us to adapt. It's asking us to somehow adopt a new perspective. Um, how can we clear our minds and open into a clarity around what we can do? Now, it's also you know, not necessarily the time to take the action because it's so shifty, we might need to wait out the cycle to really make a move. But I think that the star of the show in this planetary aspect is Saturn. The way that this force can truly challenge us and it can challenge us Difficultly, if we resist, it will actually cause a lot more tension than we might want. But if we allow Saturn to just do its work and open to these kind of hard truths that we're having to face, if we can align to our patience, to the rhythmic current of the cycles, to just kind of ride this wave out, there's something really big and beautiful coming. There's such a deep transformation, especially with Pluto in this trine with Jupiter. That's definitely expanding our capacity for transformation. So Saturn's really grounding this all in and saying, yes, let's make these visions real, but we need to bring them to the ground. It's also in sad, mutable Sagittarius though. So it's not gonna be so earthy in terms of like rooting. I think it's really about trusting in the change. That might be what I call the video. It's trusting in the change. Because Sagittarius is riding the currents of the mind and the freedom and fires. It's, a, it's ruled by Jupiter. So it's this incredibly expanding sign. It wants to go and adventure and travel and be in the flow of life. And so Saturn is going to devote itself to bringing forward a truth in these changing times so find yourself riding that crest that wave into your next cycle and i'm excited to see what comes about for all of you in this thank you for being on this ride we will see you soon and enjoy your new moon